What's going on, everybody? Hope you're all having a good Thursday. Uh, last night was rough in the NBA, especially if you didn't have Damian Lillard. And I had left so many lineups with plenty of money to play Lillard and Morant, and I just didn't do it. I just didn't want to. I didn't. I don't know. I didn't think Lillard was going to score 62 points and have one of the best shooting nights of the season, basically, for anyone. Pretty amazing stuff. Um Unfortunately, it wasn't good for me, but we're back at it today. We're going to try and find a way to win on this. Uh, it's a small slate with a lot of spread out stuff. And so far, we don't have a lot of injury news. So it's going to be a little tricky to go through. But we're going to go through game by game real quick and run down what <clears throat> I think is the best first look we can do at the moment. All right. So on the Detroit side, as always, you have a bunch of guys who project to be fairly decent. Uh, as of right now, Jalen Duran is my favorite play here. I don't mind if you want to play Isaiah Stewart instead. You have the forward eligibility. Um, I'm a little less interested in Killian Hayes than I am Jaden Ivey. I feel like he's gotten sort of more of the looks lately. None of these guys are quite priorities for me, but they're all in play. And don't forget the, the Bogdanovich thing. They're going to try to showcase him until they can trade him. So mostly for me, I'm considering Ivy Bogdanovich Duran, but I'm also considering Stewart and Hayes because it's such a strange slate that I'm trying to figure out what Brooklyn's going to do. And if Brooklyn sits Kyrie, I think I would want to have more interest in stacking this game. Jumping over to Bro the Brooklyn side, Seth Curry, no surprise, big revenge game against his former team. We see it all the time. It, back in Philly, he puts up a monster game. His projection is a little higher on Saberson than I would have expected or can really understand. If Kyrie is out, let's go ahead and, and stack this one up. If Kyrie is in, I'm okay with playing Kyrie, but it's a little nerve wracking on the back to back. And I'm not like in love with it. I don't think this is like some automatic smash play. I, this is a nationally televised game. I, no, no, sorry. The next game is nationally. Sorry, that's Boston, New York. Um, he, the, the last night was the televised game. Excuse me, guys. Sorry, it's early today. Um, but as of right now, Curry does certainly look like a reasonable play. I just, I, I just personally think that, that if he's going to be this projecting this well of that ownership, I'll tend to take the fade on him. But um, it doesn't mean I don't like him. It just means that I don't think he should be this high owned uh, at 5K. I think that you could, you know, argue that Joe Harris's projection should be within five points of his and they're, they're, you know, 900 different. And I don't love Joe Harris either. So I'm sort of struggling what to do with this game until we hear who's actually in. I do think that like, I, I think I'll skip the Claxton thing. Uh, again, Kyrie is just sort of a maybe for me at right at this moment. And I think Royce O'Neal is reasonable, but only if I was sort of more game stacking, same with Curry, and that would be if Kyrie or someone sat. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on that one going forward. But nobody in this game who immediately stands out as an automatic priority. This is another one of those games, that the Knicks in, in Boston, that, that feels very stackable because of, I mean, if you just look here, you basically only have, what, eight guys who are going to play for the Knicks and, and six who are going to play significant minutes. So you've got a lot of minutes against the Boston team that even though they're good defensively, they actually do give up points and they play pretty fast. So I'm open to the idea of, of a game stack here. Julius Randle's been incredible. It's probably being under projected again. Uh, it is a tough matchup, but we've seen him in tough matchups just continually put up these 55 and 60s. And I think that he's really interesting. Not quite enough to make my priority list as of right now, but I wouldn't be surprised to see myself with some Randle Barrett or Randle Brunson lineups running it back with Tatum Brogdon or something on the other side. Um, but I don't think that, you know, because the Celtics aren't going to play a ton of guys, but with Jalen Brown and Brogdon back, it's a little harder to get to the Tatum price. So maybe the better way to do it would be to go ahead and play a Brogdon. Um, actually, I really just have Brogdon as a priority as of right now. But again, still, still want to see how the news shakes out. I mean, I assume these guys will play because there was a rest day for them last time. Um, but it, it's, a, it's a game that just because you have tight rotations that I wanted that I was interested in, but the more you look at it, it's just kind of hard to get to pricing wise. So probably not going to have any massive individual priority plays from this game. If I did, they'd probably be on the Knicks side and, uh, Julius Randle certainly seems like a reasonable play and he may end up making my main lineups, uh, by the end of the day. Chicago Charlotte, this feels like another very stackable game. The problem is we have all these question marks on, on Charlotte. So it's hard to analyze this early. Lamelo and Hayward, who I expect or expected to play right now, but they're sort of getting hedge projections. If Lamelo is out, even if Hayward plays, uh, I'm going to go right back to Terry Rozier, even at a high price. I'll play uh, some McDaniel's. I'll play PJ Washington, but really want to find out what's happening with Hayward and Lamelo. If Hayward and Lamelo are in, PJ Washington is the only guy I have a, a serious level of interest in. In fact, as of early in the day, I'm going to put him on my early core. Um, I think he's just a really you know. 
he's a solid guy. Uh, you know, he's, he's been really solid this year. It's a great, it's a really good matchup for both teams here. And, um, PJ Washington had, had a couple of bad games in a row, which I, I thought would keep the ownership and, and the projection off of them. It's still may, but you can see that I think that like, especially if you have Hayward and LaMelo out again, he'll get a little more usage. And I understand that he's had some terrible games, but I don't think it's a reason to, uh, to not play him. Maybe core is too strong right now. We'll see how we feel once we go through the rest of the video. But I do think that uh, PJ Washington is my favorite play on that side. And, and if, if we get those guys out, you can stack this game. And I think that you can use, I actually feel like today is a little bit of a better day because we don't have much value right now. Guys like Caruso are standing out a little bit more for me than usual. In fact, Caruso, I would put because the lack of value as a value as a core play that will probably is like 90%, 99% probably to change because I think that I'm going to end up finding things I like a little bit better, but I think Caruso, no matter what is going to be in play. Um, I just don't know if he's going to be one of my core guys by the end of the day. I think Patrick Williams is also really interesting. He's, been really, really good in real life, just getting better. Just the problem is, is that offensively, he doesn't do that much. And the usage is so low. It's never that exciting to play him. And if I had to pick one of the spend ups, it would be Vooch for me tonight. I think you could argue almost for Vooch as being a core play. Like I know that the price is, is higher than, than Vooch's average. I know that it's a little bit, it's not like a great point per dollar play. It doesn't feel great when you necessarily look at most of the, uh, most of his results as a nine K player, but one, we don't have a ton of great plays at the top tonight. Um, I don't think he's going to, you know, I don't think he outscores Randall here that much, but we've seen what centers have done to Charlotte and it's really hard not to have a lot of interest in Vooch. Um, I think he's got a massive ceiling here and it wouldn't surprise me if he had one of those 55, 60 you know, fantasy point games tonight. This does feel like it, it's, it's his type of matchup. If not for him, I would go Levine, then DeRozan in that order, but neither of them are, are standing out. I just, I just love the that matchup so much for Vooch that I, I can't kind of resist it. So He's my favorite one over there um, outside of the value play of uh, Caruso. Cleveland, this is one of those weird slates where if we are starved for value, you can consider guys like Okoro, who has been trending the right direction in terms of minutes and even production has been over 20, you know, which doesn't sound like much, but he's 3,600. We don't have a lot of value. He's been over 22 fantasy points now, four out of the last five games, over 19 or more, six out of the last seven. It's it's not a fun play. It's not like the oh we were, we got Isaac Okoro. He's going to get us thirty five fantasy points. No, it's just like we're, if you're looking for value, I do think that he stands out as someone who definitely provides that. This is obviously a hugely plus matchup for the whole Cleveland roster because you're playing at one of the worst defensive teams in the league, and it's just about deciding which way we want to go with it. I think if Mitchell's in, he's reasonable. I tend to like him when they really need him more. Um, Garland, I'm probably not going to play today. So I think I think I'm deciding between Mobley and Allen as good plays um, as the bigs. But again, nothing that really screams must play, must play. In fact, most of my best plays or early look are going to be in the late game. Uh, then on the Houston side, um, I want to see who plays for Houston today. I've already seen some of the numbers shift around, so I don't know if they – no, they haven't actually announced anybody sitting yet that I've seen, other than obviously we know KPJ is out. Shingun has been awesome, man. I mean, what a ride. Like, can we can we get away with playing him at 8,700 on a back-to-back -back after he just put up 62? After playing 36 minutes on a back-to-back? -back? Yikes, I don't know. Um, he played 37 minutes his last back-to-back -back and put up 70 fantasy points against the Lakers. This is a much tougher matchup. So I, I think Shingun, if he stays low alone, is actually going to end up being someone I, I strongly consider. I just am worried about, you know, again, are they going to play him 36 back to back? We haven't seen that. Even when he played 37 last time, he played 29 the game before. And then are they going to let everybody play on the on the back to back? Um, so it's just it's just really up in the air for me right now. And it's, it's again, these things are very hard to analyze, especially this time of year. And then like maybe a, a three weeks after the all star break is when it gets like this hard again, because we're going to hear about a lot of news that we just don't have early in the morning. So we're just trying to get you ready for things we, we are going to consider for later. Um, once again, I want to remind everybody that live is at 6.30 Eastern time today, not at 6 Eastern because of the slate starting at 7.30. Um, Dallas and Phoenix. Oddly, this is one of the rare times where I have multiple players from Dallas that I like, and they're not named Luca. Um, I do like, I, I would be happy to play Luca if I could get to him. It's just going to be really hard to get to him with some of the value. I do like Dwight Powell in this value. I, I, I think that I'm going to take a shot here. They showed that they would give him minutes in the last game. He closed. He put up 37 fantasy points. We don't usually see that from Dwight at Powell. We also have a very, very suspect value on this slate. So both Powell and Finney Smith at early look do stand out as good point per dollar plays. 
as does Josh Green. Um, as long as Wood is out, you know, we, we really don't have another big and Aiton's supposed to be back tonight so that you'd think they'd match Powell up with him rather than try to double him the whole night. So that's my guess as to what they do. And that makes both, both Powell and Finney Smith. And I think you could say Green instead of Finney Smith. That's fine with me. But I think I think these guys are all interesting, including Hardaway, Dinwiddie. I, I have a lot of interest in all of these guys. And most of my lineups right now are going to be recirculating players from this game. Um, I'll have some Dinwiddie, Finney Smith, Powell lineups and then run it back on the other side. I'll have some Hardaway um, Powell lineups. I'll have some Hardaway Green lineups. I'll have some Luca Green Powell lineups. There's going to be some some form of this game that is is my early favorite spot. I also think it's a competitive game, nationally televised, and you have two good basketball teams, or two when the Suns were, were counting on them being good, two pretty good basketball teams. Let's say that. Um, and then on, on the Suns side, like I love both Chris Paul and Cam Johnson tonight, and I have no problem with using eight and either. I think they're all really really strong plays. I think this makes for a nice little game stack. And also, we don't need the extra time tonight to decide what to do. But if you play, you know, you never know if you hear a guy who's out the, you know, later in the in the last game or somebody sprains their ankle in warmups, weird stuff happens. Uh, you'll have the ability by playing enough of these guys to really focus in on who you really want. And I, I do think getting four or five players from this game is my first look, which is why I kind of breeze past the other ones. If I wasn't going to do that, I would be trying to find a way to possibly stack Chicago Charlotte. And those would be my favorite spots on this slate that we've talked about anyway so far. Um, I, I do, I do like this game stack quite a bit. So as, as you can see, as of, as of right now, I've got four players in my core from this game stack and I can argue strongly for another four or five actually. Um, so that's where I'm at here. San Antonio on the back-to-back, -back, literally, this is the most frustrating situation. This is why we like the Phoenix, you know, game partially too, is if we have late news on the back-to-back -back with the Spurs, you'd think that some, some people are going to be sitting here. And we just don't know for sure which ones yet. We already don't have Vassell and Lankford. Saw a nice game out of Sohan last night. If he's good to go tonight, I think I would take a shot with him, although I worry about how much they'll play him on the back-to-back. -back. But it's really just nothing stands out as being a great play for the Spurs at the moment. By the end of the day, it may. Um, hopefully before lock, un you know, unlikely because the Spurs are kind of annoying that way. But that is going to be something we're going to have to deal with, and we can discuss later. Zach Collins had a, had a really nice game last night, 3,700. Again, have to see if they play him on the back-to-back. -back. I think they will play most of these guys, but I have a feeling somebody sits. At least at least one of these guys sits. We'll see. On the Clippers side, love Paul George. He's my other priority play as of right now. Again, keep an eye out later for my core plays because they're going to be better than they are this morning. We're going to get news that we don't even have. We don't have yet. Um, but I like Paul George at 8,500. I think it's a fair price, a good matchup. Um, we know Paul George is not as, you know, can be aggravating at times to, to play when Kawhi is playing because he doesn't always go do his whole full thing. I think this is a really good spot for him. And he is, uh, he is my favorite play in this game. I also am open to guys like Marcus Morris and Batum more than I usually would be because of the lack of immediate value on the slate. We might have more later. Anyway, guys, just a quick first look, please like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, just wanted to give you guys an early look before we, uh, before we decided, uh, you know, before we did anything, but the truth is the real, the real help is going to be at 630 Eastern time. And then take a look at my early plays and core plays a little bit later on when I have a little more figured out. Thanks so much to everybody for being a good true DFSer. Uh, jump on into our discord if you aren't already and uh, let's make some money today, everybody.